Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Prehistory, which is a new Euro-style game of Stone Age Living that's on Kickstarter right now. And I'm going to be doing a two-play run through today so you can see what it's all about and decide if you want to back it. Although before I get going, as always, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? And welcome to the Stone Age. Here we are, folks. We've got this big central board, um, which is our kind of central camp where all the tribes come together to get stuff done. Painting, and gathering, and uh, ceremonies, and fishing, and uh, migration. But that's only half of it, because over here, we've got a randomly generated map of the surrounding areas. You can see, here's where our little starting uh, village is, but there's all kinds of opportunities out there. More fishing spots, and m monoliths, and uh, animals to go hunting and whatnot. Now, this is created randomly every time, and this is the size of it as a two-player game. It gets even bigger and bigger and bigger the more players you've got. And then finally, each player has their own little board, because we're going to be working on our own clan tribes as we spread out. And uh, at the beginning of the game, I've, in addition to our one guy we've got here in the central village who's ready to go out, I could migrate more of my people out onto the board so they could go exploring. Or they could engage in painting, etc., etc. Lots of stuff to be done here. We've already got it set up and we're ready to go. Now, the game takes place over five years. And in each year, we will play through spring, summer, um, winter, and fall. No, actually, it's winter, spring, summer, and then autumn is the order. So, let's get going with our first year. It's winter time, everybody, which is just kind of like set up for the round. What we do is, in winter, we take one of these, and we, as part of setup, we had set aside five of them, because this represents the five rounds we'll play through. So we're going to take the first one here, and we put it with the most valuable resource, in this case, fish. Not apples, or stone tablets, or migration, or uh, mammoth meat, or fire, but in this case, it's fish, and we put it facing the number three slot here in the middle. So, that defines the relative value of the six resources of the game for this round. When we go into the second year, hey, it's going to be mammoths that are on the top in the number three spot. So, this changes from round to round. Also, at the beginning of every round, or at the beginning of every year in winter, we have a bunch of hunting opportunities that come out. And if we don't get these done in a given round, they will disappear, and five completely new ones will come out in the second round. So, let's see. So, we know where there's a saber-toothed tiger, and hey, here's some tiger tracks, and some more tiger tracks, some rhino tracks, and some mammoth tracks. Okay, so this is we're getting engaged in hunting. We can do all that. Uh, also, there are going to be five different ceremonies we could do. One that celebrates painting, one that celebrates getting little dinky fish, the level one fish, which normally aren't very exciting. One that celebrates, oh, another one for celebrating painting. And, oh, one for getting a lot of fish, for really increasing our fishing abilities. And finally, one for, oh, yeah, so this one is some more saber tooth tracks. So that goes right there. Okay, so in winter, we put a new one of these tiles out. If um, there were any leftover things from the previous round, they're all wiped away. Five new hunting and ceremony cards come out. Oh, and also, when this got placed, we put one of each of the matching cubes in each of, on each of these five little Stonehenge monument things. So a blue one goes there, a red one, a gray one. So this is accumulating action cubes. These will be actions that we can do later in the game if we collect these cubes. Um, which, and we can use those action cubes in summer. But that'll come up a little bit later. Winter is over! The game is set up, and now we move into spring. And so, each player on their own board rotates their weather tile once, clockwise, and that determines what resources they're going to get. So, this year, I, my tribe, or my clan, gets three apples, one mammoth, um, no migration, two fish, and one fire, and no tablets. So, let's go on ahead and pull those out. One, two, three, red. And these cubes are all going to come up here uh, next to my guys waiting to migrate. If, if cubes are in this area of my player board, they count as resources that are available for me to do stuff with. I can spend resources to get things done. And here's what I have harvested. Right. Jen, meanwhile, she rotates hers, and she's going to end up with a bunch of different stuff. She's got one apple. She's got three opportunities for migration. Her people are feeling the urge. Uh, she's got one fire and two stone. 
All right, so there we go. So that's what Jen has. All right. And now we will start in turn order spending these resources to do one of the core actions of the game. Now, uh, player order, we already decided right up front. I am the first player, Jen is the second player, so I will go first. And I can spend these resources to cave paint, to gather, to celebrate or uh, do ceremonies, to fish or to, to fish or hunt or to migrate, which means get my guys off of my own little uh, board and out into the world so I can do more exploring later in the year. Alrighty, now what do I want to do? Well, one thing that might give me an overall strategy is these ceremony cards, because if I'm able to grab one of these, that will give me a bonus that I want to try and chase after for the whole game, like collecting a lot of the little dinky level one fishing, or just trying to get my fishing uh, strength all the way up. So, maybe the first thing I want to do is engage in a ceremony so that I can claim one of these cards and give myself a goal for the rest of the game. Now, not all ceremonies are created equal. This number represents how tough it is to get. These ones are easy, this one's a little bit tougher to do, this one and this one's easy. Okay, and there's no level three ceremonies. So, uh, if I want to get either of these, I've got to spend one resource. I've got to spend one resource for either of these. For this one, I've got to spend two resources for the uh, one that it it gives me four points at the end of the game if I complete all four of these paintings. It's interesting. This one that only requires one resource for me to get would give me five points if I do all these. That's because this is tougher to do. It's worth more points, but it's easier to get. So, do I want to focus on being an excellent painter or maybe an excellent fisher? Or, instead of doing a ceremony, do I just want to get some more, um, what do you call them, the uh, tracks, so that if I ever catch Sabretooth, it's worth more points to me because I spent more time tracking them. I think that is a good way to start out with ceremonies. So, how am I going to do that? Well, like I said, whichever one of these actions I'm going to do, I'm going to have to spend some of my resources. And the ceremony track is over here. Now, as part of setup, I put my three shaman in three random spots. Jen put hers in three spots. If there were more players, they'd all be arrayed around here in different spots. And by the way, before I go any farther, I should say, Everything you're seeing here is prototype. I believe the shaman won't actually be little cylinders, but there'll be little shaman meeples and stuff like that. I know the graphic design of the board has changed quite a bit. Some of the iconography has changed. If you want to see what the final game looks like, go ahead and hit that eye in the top right corner screen to go check out the Kickstarter page. But still, this will get you a pretty good idea. Anyway, so looking over here, if I want to do a ceremony, to do a ceremony, I have to make my shaman dance, which means, strictly speaking, I have to get them to move to a position around the big ceremonial fire that they're not currently in. So I can move this guy over here, or over here, or over here. I cannot move him into a space where I've already got other shaman. Now, if I, if I do a ceremony and I only make one of my shaman dance into another space not occupied by my guys, that means I can get a level one bonus. If I make two of my shaman dance, I can get the level two bonus. So which one do I want? You know, I think I'm just gonna take it easy. I'm gonna try and get a level one. I think I like I like fishing. I want to make fishing really worth something. If I get my fishing technology level up to 15, which means I gotta really work hard to climb up high, high, high over the course of the game, there'll be four bonus points in it for me. So I've eyeballed that, I wanna get it. So it's a level one, I have to make one of my three shaman dance. And what that means is, if I look at the layout, and this was, uh, this was just a randomly chosen one of these little uh, icon values that just got put in here. So, uh, basically, if I want one of my guys to dance over here, I need to spend a brown cube. Uh, I need to spend some mammoth meat. If I want one of my guys to move over here, I need to spend red. I need to spend an apple. If I want to move a guy over here, I need to spend one of my white migration cubes. I Remember, I cannot move into a space where I already am. I have to move into one of those. So, do I have any brown, white, or red resources? Why, yes, I do. Uh, in fact, actually, I have a lot of red resources, so that's pretty cool. Let's go on ahead. And I'll say, I'm, I'm, you know, I, remember, I could spend one, two, or three resources to get one, two, or three of my shaman to move. The more of my shaman dance, the better a one I can get. But I'm just going for the simple one. I'll spend um, one red and tell this guy, hey, dance yourself right on over there. It could have been any of my three guys to dance. But now that I've done that, in a future turn, I could have one of my guys dance over here into the fire space. And it just so happens. I do have a fire cube. So on a subsequent turn, I might, you know, I might have somebody else move over there. Now there's one restriction. If I was actually spending two cubes right now, 
I cannot have another shaman dance into a place I just vacated. So in this case, I would not be able to send a red over here and a yellow over here because this guy has to go to either the white or the brown. He can't go to a vacated. But on a future turn, I'd be able to have him dance over there. But it doesn't matter. I'm only having one guy dance. So he, I spend it to have this guy dance over here. And uh, now, so this is spent now. It just goes back to supply. And since it was one guy dancing, I can take this, this, or this. I will take this, and I've now got a goal for myself. Get my fishing level up to 15, which is worthwhile to do in and of itself. But now it's even more valuable to me to do it because I'll score four additional points at the end of the game if I pulled it off. All right. So that is a little bonus I've got. Now, this isn't going to refill until the second year when any of these that weren't taken go away. So. I have done my first action in spring, but there's a little bit more to it. Whenever you do a springtime action, you must spend a resource cube or one or more resource cubes, depending on what you're doing, um, which I did. And you also have to donate one of your cubes to the village circle here. Jen and I, we call it like, you know, uh, respecting the elders. I now have to take one of my remaining resource cubes and put it here. Since I did the ceremony, which is the, the fire icon, I look over here. Here's where the fire icon is. So I have to give one of my resources up by donating it to the elders by putting it in one of these two spots. So what am I going to give up? Uh, let's see. Do I want... I'll give up one of my red cubes. Now, by giving up this red cube, I'm giving up the opportunity to have, see, I can't have somebody dance into that area, but I'm also giving up the opportunity to use this red cube to go picking this egg over here. Or I'm giving up the opportunity for this red cube to help me fishing, because you can see fishing right now requires red, gray, or white cubes. Fishing, or, or, or red cubes also allow me to migrate a single guy. Um, red cubes also allow me to paint a hand. So by getting rid of this, I'm limiting some of the actions I can do, but that's okay. And so I mark this here. Uh, because remember, I did a ceremony. This, this little monolithy thing right here is the ceremony section because of how this is laying. And now, any other player or myself, there can only be one more ceremony done this round. Because as soon as somebody else does a ceremony, they have to donate to the elders and fill this space up. And then there will be no more ceremonies. Now. There are still two opportunities to fish, two opportunities to gather, two opportunities to paint, two opportunities to migrate, and two opportunities to hunt. But from now on, for this year, there's only one opportunity to spend resources to do a ceremony. All right, my turn is over. I've still got five cubes, five other resources that I will continue to use this spring. But it is now Jen's turn, and what is she going to do? Now, here's the thing. If Jen wants to snag one of these, maybe she should do it really quick. Um, because, like I said, there's only one more chance to do a ceremony. Now, you don't have to. Ceremonies are nice. They give you this kind of bonus. But what might Jen do instead? Yeah, you know what? Jen is going to go a different way. Jen is going to go fishing. You can see down here, this, uh, this little dial told us how we spend resources to do ceremonies. This dial tells us how we spend resources to gather resources. Oh. Hmm. Oh, you know what? No, actually, Jen was thinking she was going to fish because right now there's a level one fish, a level two fish, a level one fish, and two level three fish. Uh, the sooner you catch this fish, the quicker you go up the fishing track. And Jen now knows that I want to go up the fishing track ASAP because I've got a special goal to do it. So here's the thing. If Jen did a ceremony, she could get the other fishing bonus that would get benefit her for getting the little dinky, weak level one fish. So Jen could go for that, or she could go for a big, fat, juicy level three fish. I think that's what she wants to do. Um, but she doesn't have to rush on it right away. Because here's the thing. If Jen wants to get a level one fish, she has to give up, uh, you know, with this dial, on the water side, she has to give up an apple, a, or, you know, a red cube, a gray cube, or a white cube. An apple, a stone, or a migration. She has to give up one of those resources to get a level one. If she wants to get a level two fish, she has to give up two of these resources. If she wants to get a level three fish, she has to give up three of the resources. Now, it just so happens with Jen's harvest, she's got uh, exactly what she needs. So Jen could go fishing now, spend all three of these resources, and get a big, juicy level three fish. Very, very valuable. And um, if Jen got another chance to go fishing on a subsequent turn, she has more white and gray. She could get a level two fish as well, which means in the first round, she would have gone one, two, three, four, five. She'll increase five spaces on the fishing track. That'd be pretty amazing. So Jen could rush for that right now. But looking over here at the harvest section, 
Um, not all harvest tiles are created equal. This is an egg. We could harvest it, you know, or you know, gather. We could gather eggs. We could gather this kind of mango fruit sort of thing. We could gather a honeycomb. Or, if anybody want to, they could gather a honeycomb that has a bonus that would increase your, our progress. Which every time you get one of these little symbols, your progress increases, which is a very valuable tool. There's, um, you know, this berry is a progress one, and this one. So those are a bit nicer than the other ones. I think the first thing Jen's going to do is she's going to go gather it. And she wants this honeycomb because it'll give her extra progress, which means she needs to give up a white cube. It just so happens she's got three white cubes. So she'll give up a white cube to harvest, to gather some honeycomb, and at the same time, she will increase her overall clan's progress. And there's a lot of stuff we can do the more we build up on this progress meter. So anyway, so Jen takes this honeycomb, she puts it over here in her honeycomb basket, and right now, all she gets for it is just the one progress. But here's the thing. These two baskets, these two baskets, and these two baskets are pairs. If Jen now, on a subsequent turn, could gather an egg, then she would have filled this pair of baskets baskets, which will immediately give her a bonus of a red and a white action cube. And action cubes, they go down into this area. They are the cubes we use in summer. Resource cubes we use in spring. Action cubes, which are harder to get, we use in summer. So anyway, so Jen grabbed this, she increased her progress, and so she spent the white and she did that. But remember, she also now has to make a donation to the elders with one of her remaining cubes. And she will go on ahead and she will use this yellow. And because Jen was doing a harvest action, which is represented by the, the little uh, apple, that means Jen puts it over here. Uh, Jen has done a harvest action. There's only one more harvest action that can be done this year. In the same, uh, this, this spring, I mean. In the same way, there's only one more ceremony action. All right, so that was Jen's first turn. She's still got some stuff. She's increased her progress. It's my turn again. Now, this is interesting. Jen left me the opportunity to do another ceremony and get the other fishing base um, bonus tile so I could push my fishing agenda even farther. So I think, yeah, you know what? We're going to dance some more. So um, that means if I want to make any of my three shaman dance to get this level one ceremony, I need to give up an apple. Or no, I'm sorry, no. I need to give up a white, a yellow, or a brown cube. It just so happens I've got a brown cube or a yellow cube. What am I going to do? Now, see, I'm going to give up one, and I'm keeping the other one because I might want to use this yellow. This yellow won't help me with fishing. OK, here's the thing. I'm going to want, after I've gotten all these fishing things, I'm going to want to fish, which means I'm going to want to hold on to my red and my white um, cubes. I only have a red cube. But that's OK. That's OK. So I will use this yellow cube to have one of my shaman dance on over. I'll have my shaman dance on over here. And that means I'm only having one guy dance. So I've spent this. And that means I get another level one. And hey, now for every level one fish tile I have at the end of the game, I score a bonus point. So that's pretty cool. Um, right. So I'm really doubling down on fishing. But remember, I have to donate to the elders again. So one of my remaining cubes. And which one will it be? Which one will it be? It won't be red, because I need this red cube to go fishing with. Because this spring, red, gray, and white cubes are what you fish with. So I can give up a blue or a brown cube. Now I got to think about, I mean, what else am I going to do? Um, because yeah, if I go fishing with this and then I donate one, I could still have a brown. Yeah, OK, I'll go ahead and give up one of my blue. And because I was just did my second ceremony, I cover this up. Now, no, no player can do any more ceremonies. Ceremonies are done. All two of them have been completed. That was my turn again. All right. And I've still got three more cubes, which means I can basically do one more action. Because one of these cubes I'll have to donate to the village elders, and the other cube or cubes will have to go towards the action. Jen's turn. Now, Jen says uh, she got, so ooh, Jen could get this other, these berries, that would also increase her power. Or she could go gathering again and get an egg, which means she would create the pair and she'd get some more actions. And these action cubes she gets, she'd be able to use in summer. Does she do that or does she go fishing? Because remember, Jen's got the, th the right combination of cubes to get a level three fish. Hmm. Which would get her one, two, three. If she can get a level three fish and a level one fish, that would be great. But remember, there are only two opportunities to go fishing this round. Oops, nobody's done it yet. And, uh, but here's the thing. Jen knows how bad I want to fish now. 
So she probably should go fishing because she knows I'm going to. So it kind of makes sense for her to do that. But it makes sense for her to go and complete her little set to get more summertime actions. What to do, what to do. Because, I mean, she's running out of resources. If she goes uh, gathering again and uses one of these gray cubes to get an egg, she'll have to give up another cube, say one of these white. And now that means she could still go fishing and get a level 2 cube. That's not bad. Let's go for that. Jen, she's going to harvest. Hey, I did two ceremonies. Jen's doing two harvests. Nobody else is getting in our way. So Jen is going to harvest. She's going to spend one of her gray cubes, and she will donate a white cube to the uh, elder who's in charge of gathering. So now these spaces are filled up. There will be no more gathering. And Jen got an egg. She has completed a pair, and that means she gets a bonus of one red and one right action cube. This means there is the more action cubes you have, the more stuff you can do during summer. During um, spring is when we harvest resources and then use them to do actions. In summer, we use our action cubes to get to do even more stuff. And currently, Jen is in the lead on action cubes because she was able to make that pair. Nice. Okay, back to me. Finally, I'm going to go fishing, everybody. So, um, I. Ideally, I'd like to have three. So, I, but remember, I don't. I like level one fish. So I'm going to use one red, which means I don't have any gray or yeah, white. So all I can do is get a level one fish. I'm going to get a level one fish, which increases my fishing ability by one, which isn't enough to start giving me income of points or progress. If I'd gotten at least a level two fish, I could start earning points every round for free because the better you are at fishing, the more stuff you'll harvest. Remember, ultimately. I want to get my fishing level all the way up to 15 because when that's happening every round, if I'm up to 15, I'm scoring six points and a whole bunch of progress as well. So that's pretty cool. But in the meantime, so I got that fish and now I have to, once again, pay tribute to the elders. I spent this for the fishing action. I got to donate one. I've got a gray and a brown, or I'm sorry, a blue and a brown left. I'll go on ahead and get rid of the brown. So there is now only one fishing opportunity left. Okay, and interestingly, I have one cube left. I'm not going to be able to do anything else this spring. So on my next turn, I'm going to pass. But now back to Jen, and Jen says, "Hey, you know what? You're not the only one fishing today. She's going to go out as well." And now, ideally, she'd like to use all three of these cubes because, hey, she could get a level three fish. That would be awesome. But then she's out of resources to donate. So one of these three cubes has to go to a donation. She'll have the red one go. So, uh, this is the one she donated to the fishing elder. Uh, he's very happy. Jen spent two cubes. That means she can get a level two uh, she's collected, which increases her fishing ability. My fishing ability increased by one. Jen's increased by two. She's starting to make income. I am not. So, we're both fishing. And now, if there were other players, there would be no more fishing opportunities. Now, in this particular round, in this particular spring, there's still ample opportunity to paint. But you know what? Since neither of us grabbed the uh, objectives to want to go painting, we're not that intrigued by it. We could also migrate to get our guys uh, out of our hut and onto the map, but we didn't do that. Plus, nobody went hunting to you know, catch a saber-toothed tiger or tracking a mammoth or you know, whatever. Right. So, uh, but anyway, it's my turn. I have one cube left. With one cube, I can't do anything. I need at least two. One to trigger the action and one to please the elders. So I am passing. I'm done with spring. Jen has no cubes. She is done with spring. Springtime is over, folks. It is now summertime, summertime, some, some, summertime. So here's what happens in summertime. These cubes that we donated to the elders slide up onto these, these hinges, these stone hinges. And now in reverse turn order, uh, in, in winter, spring, and autumn, uh, the game proceeds in regular player order. Me first and then Jen and then other players. I'm sorry, me first, then me, Jen, and other players. Oh, by the way, I totally forgot. When I did a ceremony, there's two things that happen. Hey, you get a ceremony card and you also move your way into first player. So you'll be first player in the following round. If Jen had done a ceremony first, she would go up. But then if I had done a ceremony, I'd be second player. But, you know, say if, uh, um, you know, the interesting thing is, Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's interesting. If you do multiple ceremonies in a round, although there's only two, it is possible for you to actually push your way up in front of other players as well. But anyway, when the first ceremony I did, I, I moved into the best position. The second ceremony I did, I held on to that position, so I will be first next round. Ceremonies determine which bonus card you get and also who will be first next round. And like I said, in spring and autumn, 
Player order is normal, but in summer, which is where we are right now, player order is reversed. Jen, in last place, gets to go first in summer. And the first thing we do in summer is all these cubes we donated, you know, these were resource cubes we donated to the tribe. They are now action cubes waiting to be drafted. Jen gets first dibs. She could take, she could pick any of these. She doesn't want a single, a single, or a single. So she wants this triple, this triple, or this triple. And those will be additional cubes that will come over here that will give her more actions to do in the summer. So Jen is going to have five actions she could potentially do this summer, while I am only going to have three cubes worth of action. Jen gets first dibs. What does she want? Well, it depends on what she wants to do. There, the year is not over. We could still go gathering more stuff. We could still do more ceremonies. Jen, if Jen did two ceremonies, she could go to second place. If she did a, a second, a first ceremony, nothing happened. The second ceremony would push her into first place in terms of player order. If Jen does two ceremonies, um, because ceremonies require yellow cubes. But um, right, what does Jen want to do? Jen would like to do a ceremony because, hey, she didn't get any of these. I got them. There's more opportunities to fish, though. There's more of these. And here's the interesting thing. In spring, when we are spending resource cubes, we have to match the cubes to what these little wheels say. You saw me doing that. It's the same. Oh, and here's the cubes I ma Jen matched when she fished. If we wanted to hunt, we'd have to match against these colors. If we wanted to migrate, we'd have to match against colors to get better or worse. If we wanted to paint, we'd have to match against the colors. But in summer, when we're using action cubes instead of resources, now we don't, we don't care what the colors are. Instead, we care what the action is. Uh, the more gray cubes you have in summer, the more gray action cubes you have in summer, the more painting you can do. The more yellow action cubes, the more ceremony you can do. The more blue action cubes, the more fishing. The more brown action cubes, the more hunting, etc., etc. So Jen is setting herself up to be able to do more things. Now, does Jen just want to go and gather more? Because, hey, there's still these berries, which would give her more progress. So I think Jen would like to gather more. But you know what? No matter what, if she takes this, this, or this, she's getting a red cube, which will help her gather. Does she want a yellow that will help her ceremony? Or a, um, or a uh, white that will help her migrate? Or does she want a blue that will help her fish more? Which is interesting because Jen knows how much I want this level one fish because if I get this level one fish, I'll cross this threshold and start making fish income as well. But Jen gets to go first in summer. If she gets a blue cube, she could fish first and take this from me so I wouldn't get it. So I think, yeah, Jen wants this group or this group so she can do a little bit of summertime fishing. So um, this would give her, and either way, uh, so it's really, does she want another yellow or another brown? A yellow would let her do some ceremony. A brown would let her do some hunting. Although, actually, interestingly, a yellow or a brown would let her do hunting. And um, you know, any yellow or brown could let her do... Yeah, I think, I think this one will work better because it gives her more flexibility. Um, because the blue she'll use for the fishing, and then the brown and yellow she'll either use for hunting or ceremonies. Is that good? Yeah, yeah. So Jen's going to grab these three. All right. And so, and now, so Jen goes, I go, obviously I'm going to grab one of these triples as well. I want to get more fishing also, but I'm afraid Jen's going to beat me to it. But I, I mean, you know, my whole thing is about fishing, so I'll grab, remember, work cubes, blue always means fishing. Um, when you're using resources in the summer, blue could be used anywhere. A, a blue resource can be used on anything, but a blue work cube can only be used for fishing because fishing requires blue, rubber. So anyway. So we both uh, drafted. These are going to stay up. These are going to build up over time and become more attractive. But anyway, now, remember, in reverse turn order, we get to do actions. And what's going to happen is we are going to activate all six actions. First, everybody has the option to paint. Everybody has the option to gather. Everybody has the option to ceremony, and then fish, and then hunt, and then migrate. So Jen's up first. Hey, everybody, let's interrupt this prehistory for a moment. And if you'd like to watch some more action, you can hit the eye in the top right corner screen to go to the extended playthrough. Or instead, you can go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.